My passion is really helping women's voices get out into the world. This book project has been a vehicle to make that happen. These are just themes that run through so many of our lives. And it doesn't matter if we're male or female or black or white or from America or a different country. It doesn't really matter. I'm here with April Adams Pertwee. She is um, ultimately in the business of storytelling. She's a journalist, a speaker, a woman's empowerment leader. When you share your story, you shine a light. You can make your mark in the world. You can ha live out your purpose. A lot of people are walking around with stories that are holding power over them. What I want to help people do is understand how to shift that so that you can use that story in a, in a positive, powerful way. And so when you learn to do that, there's a lot of healing that takes place for you and it, and it shines a light back for you too. You're listening to the Real Business Connections Network. Real Business Connections Network. Powered, powered, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC. Subscribe now and check us out at realbusinessconnections.com. Enjoy the show. Welcome, everyone, once again to 15-Minute Friday on the Real Business Connections Network. Hungry business people like yourself are really busy, so we'll just dive right into it. I'm here with April Adams Pertwee. April, Hi. what's happening? How are you? Excited to be in this 15-minute hot seat. Woo! Well, we might even run long because I love talking to you, and I don't want to <laughs> rush. The oh, boy, me of... too, Ben. <laughs> April, for anyone who doesn't know, she is um, ultimately in the business of storytelling, her philosophy is everyone has a story, and she's fascinated with getting to the core of what that story is. She's not just a storytelling junkie. I found she's a journalist, a speaker, a woman's empowerment leader, podcast host, community builder, and a budding friend of mine. So again, April, I'm excited to have you on the show. Thank you, Ben. I'm thrilled to to be here. And yes, it's been so fun to get to know you this past year and to be introduced to you. And we've had lots of interaction and it's been every single one of them has been delightful. I I love my time with you, April. And and that quick bio was just me pulling the bullet points out of like an awesome speaking kit. Like, did I miss anything? Is there anything you think is relevant that we missed? Um, only because it's really relevant right this very minute. I'm also an author and we have our third book coming out in 10 days. <laughs> oh, well, and it <laughs> so will it's very April, relevant right now. That will be out when this comes out. So let's assume okay. it's, it's already out. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Shine Your Light. It's um, a book that is kind of caps off a trilogy that we've been working on of women's stories. They all three of the books. Uh, our collaborative books. And we have brought 34 women through the process of excavating their story, telling their story, writing their story, and publishing their story in our books. Each of the women has written a chapter in one of our collaborative books. And our third and final collaborative book in the series is Shine Your Light, and that is our newest release. And it's very exciting time. And I myself have a chapter in each one of the books, our other two books are called Elevate Your Voice and Step Into Your Brave. And it's been a real journey the last two years to go on this, this publishing journey. And for myself, it's how I became an author. I had not written a book before. And it's how 30, 34 women have done the same. So it's been really exciting. And I'm I'm feeling the juice of it right now because Shine Your Light has just been released as well. So cool. uh, it's a very exciting time and it's really fun to add author to that to that list of other things that I've done, you know? Yeah. T tell us how the women and the men, because I want to check it out. How can we read this, this masterpiece? How do we get it? Yes. Thank you. And I do want to say that a lot of men do read these stories and, and report back to us that they're relatable to to anybody. Um, I primarily work with women. I, ha I do have men clients. So, um, you know, the storytelling work applies to everyone. But um, but my passion is really helping women's voices get out into the world. And so this book project has been a vehicle to make that happen. But the stories that they're sharing inside, I mean, gosh, it runs the gamut from, you know, divorce or, you know, great loss. I write about the loss of my dad in one of the in one of the books. Um, 
it covers from just, you know, feelings of abandonment or, you know, not being good enough or imposter syndrome. I mean, these are just themes that run through so many of our lives. And it doesn't matter if we're male or female or black or white or from America or a different country, it doesn't really matter. So the the themes and the stories that you're going to find inside the books written by real people, just real life um, a lot of them are are people that are in business, but they're actually not telling business stories in this book. I mean, we do feature women in business, but like I said, these are just their real personal stories that they're bringing forward. And to answer your question, you can go to Amazon. We are listed on Amazon and that is the place to go. And I will also add the really cool feature is that because it's a collaborative book and in, in Shine Your Light, there's 13 of us that are authors of that book. Amazon proceeds are all being funneled to an organization called Kiva.org. And when we get our royalty checks from Amazon, we are funding micro loans for other women in business who need a leg up, who maybe need some training, need some funding, need some help to get their business off the ground or to continue to help it grow. So to date, bef- you know, really before we've received our first royalty checks for Shine Your Light, through the vehicles of our other two books, Elevate Your Voice and Step Into Your Brave, we have funded over 100 micro loans for women in need. And that will be the same for Shine Your Light. That's amazing. And I'll make yeah. sure that baby's in the show notes so people can click purchase. But let's dive super deep into the best part of the conversation. And I always like to start with a quote. I want to call it a tweetable. I don't know if it's a tweetable anymore since it's x.com, but xable or something. But yeah, xable. <laughs> what, what, what do you have for us? What's a good way for us to get started? Well, I'm going to lead with, you know, lead with what counts here in my world at Light Beamers. And that is when you share your story, you shine a light. That's the philosophy that I hold. That's a quote by yours truly. It's a philosophy that I hold very near and dear to my heart and believe in with all of my heart um, that 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 is what happens when people are brave enough like the women that have come forward to share their stories in our books and a lot of other people that are out there sharing their story is that you end up shining a light for other people mm, when you share your story you shine your light and yes yeah it's hard for someone to find you if that light's not shining i can't imagine they might be looking yeah. for you Well, and that's just it with storytelling. You know, a lot of the work that I do is helping people take up a little bit more space in the world, is coming forward and sharing that story. It is coming forward and, you know, getting really visible so that you can make your mark in the world. You can live out your purpose. You can make the impact that you want to make. And in doing that, you are invariably going to be helping someone else. You invariably are going to be able to communicate you know, some experiences that you've had, some stories that you've lived through. And in doing that, that it provides a lot of hope and encouragement and inspiration Mm -hmm. and just teaching and wisdom to other people. But the really cool thing is that light also gets shown back for us, the actual storyteller, right? Because um, everyone, you know, tells me this, man, this is really healing work. A lot of times when we look at our stories, our first reaction might be like, oh, you know, that's, that story is a doozy. I'm not quite sure what to do with it, or I don't really want to talk about that story. But once you really learn how to shift it, I always say um, a lot of people are walking around with stories that are holding power over them. What I want to help people do is understand how to shift that so that you can use that story in a in a positive, powerful way. And so when you learn to do that, there's a lot of healing that takes place for you and it, and it shines a light back for you too. Mm. So I want to, and I will in a second, I want to ask you about like how to tell the story and what to put in our stories. But before we get there, what about the people? And I was in this category earlier in my life. What about the mm-hmm. people that feel like they don't have a story mm-hmm. to tell? <laughs> or who, Those are my favorite gonna, people. My life's so yeah. mundane. I don't have a story. Right. Let's first ask, answer that question. What if we feel like we don't have a story And then once we realize that we do, we can get into actually how to tell it. Yeah, it is. It is one that so many people think that, right? So many people think that they don't have a story. And I'm I'm looking, I have some notes here because I wrote something down yesterday that I was working on something and I'm like, this is perfect. I'm going to share with you what I wrote 
Um, Please. And that is, um, hold on, give me one second, because I have the sheet of paper right here. Even in the mundane, right? Because you said that, like, my life is so mundane. (laughs) No, why would anybody be interested in my story? I'm so boring. I'm very vanilla. And I used to say that too. I'm like, I'm just, you know, just this girl from Texas that, you know, whatever. Like, I I didn't think I had anything really to share, but I was wrong. I absolutely have a lot to share. But at the end of the day, we're all looking for a place to belong, right? That's our one of our deepest, most innate needs in life is to understand that we have a place, that we belong to a community, that other people see us and that they hear us. So even in the small stories, the seemingly small stories, your small stories will help someone else not feel so small. So you can't sit here and say, I don't have a story or nobody would be interested in my story because there is someone else, a sister or a brother sitting right next to you feeling the exact same way. And when you have the courage to show up and share that small story, again, seemingly small story, you will literally help someone else not feel so small. They too will see feel seen and heard. And that's the power of storytelling that we should not overlook. So it doesn't, you know, I'm one of these people too, Ben, that I haven't scaled Mount Everest. I haven't survived cancer. I haven't lost a child. I haven't, um, I just haven't, I haven't, you know, bounced back from financial ruin or any of these things that are like these really big stories that a lot of people do have. And so it's really easy to play that comparison game and say, well, I don't have that kind of story. So I'm just going to go let those people be the speakers. I'm just going to go let those people be the ones that write books. I'm just going to be let those people be the one that take up space on social media. Let those them go be the ones that go get all the followers. Right. And so we sit back and shrink and play small. And I just don't believe that's what we're called here to do on this earth. I firmly believe that we're called to take up space, to share our stories, to 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 share our experiences with others. And that we can't do that if we're comparing our story to someone else. It's kind of like you've heard that quote, you know, you can't compare your starting line to someone else's finish finish line, line. you know, or something like that. And it's kind of like that, you know, you just got to really stay in your own lane and focus on what you have to offer. Mm. So where, first off, I had a visceral reaction, like sharing our small stories, make others feel not small. You said it Mm -hmm. perfectly. I had a visceral, like physiological reaction and and it's yeah. so true. So where where do we start? Do we start with a small story, a small moment? You tell me. What well, what's the beginning? Where where should I begin? Well, I think it's helpful to have um, just kind of a simple roadmap on how to tell a story. You know, like if yes. you're going to look at a story, you could look at the big story, you look at the small story, and just having a framework of what pieces of that story would be relevant to share so that it would have an impact. It would, you know, be heard by the audience and received well. Um, and so, you know, for, you mentioned in the in the open and in my bio that I'm a, a former journalist. And so when I came into this work and started my company, Light Beamers, I, I had been a journalist for a really long time. And I had my career had been like literally sitting down and interviewing people and listening to try to find the pieces that I knew I could pull out of their story to package up and put together as a story, right? Right. And so when I when I kind of looked through that lens, uh, my biggest thing around light beam when I started light beamers was well, not everybody gets a sent a journalist to their house to figure out how to tell their story. I wanted to use the methodology to teach people how to do it on their own. And so I looked back through, well, what are the questions I'm always asking? What are the things that I'm always listening for when I when I spend time interviewing people? And it really comes down to these three things. And they're so simple and they're hidden in every single one of your stories, no matter what type of story it is you have to tell. And, you know, storytelling is told in threes and just like the fairy tales and the Disney stories, there's, uh, you know, once upon a time and then, you know, they meet each other and have this amazing connection and then they live happily ever after. Right. So um, there's the beginning, the middle, the end. Right. Yeah. 
So in our framework, which is just a very simple story arc, I call it um, the before, the transformation, and the other side. And I'm going to walk you through it really simply, but I want to give you a really good visual. And I want you to pretend like you're you're about to climb a mountain and you're staring at that mountain. When you're at the base of the mountain, you're at the before stage of your story. And the before stage of the story is some sort of historical context, just, you know, uh, background information or, you know, where you often where you might have been in a place of uh, of of disease or unrest or not f- not feeling fulfilled and there's you know a lot of different ways that that could look but basically when you look back at the story where did it all begin right and i'm not meaning the day you were born but i mean where did this particular story begin and in the beginning what did it look like and at the beginning of the mountain, when you're standing at the base of the mountain, you have you are just staring at a giant, you know, wall in front of you that you've got to climb. And you know it's going to be an uphill battle. You know you got to you got to cl- get on the trail and start walking and it's going to be hard. So you have to understand that's where you are at the beginning of your story and so you got to find for you where did your story begin that was literally like you standing at the base of the mountain. Mm-hmm. As you start telling the story, um, you know, there's a little bit of then the climb, right? You've got to climb that mountain. So you might give some, again, some context of what was the journey like climbing the mountain. And sometimes we fall down. Sometimes we get our knees bloody. Sometimes we we lose the trail map and we get off course, you know? Sometimes we run out, run out of water and we get dehydrated on our way up the mountain. So adding a little bit of that flavor is really helpful. But then when you get to the top of the mountain, imagine what that's like if you've ever climbed a mountain or if you can just imagine it with me if you haven't. The whole time you've been climbing, all you see in front of you is more mountain because you're not at the top yet. But when you get to the top, which is your transformation, you see the vista. You're at the top. You can see the beauty of what you've been climbing towards this whole time. And this is really when whatever that thing was that you were struggling with at the bottom of the mountain, it's been transformed. Something has changed. Something now allows you to see things differently. You see the view. You see the beauty. You see the vista. A lot of times in our lives, This is when things happen or something unfolds. Sometimes it's a single instance. It could be a cancer diagnosis, or it could be a season of life where you begin to do things differently, see things differently, and start to make change in your life. And you, and so as a result, you you have your own transformation. And through a transformation, undoubtedly, you will you will have a shift in perspective. You will see things differently and you will then start to say, look, whoa, this is pretty awesome up here. Being at the top of the mountain, you know, when you go down the mountain, you most of the time you're not going to go back the way you came from. Mm-hmm. You want to keep going down to the other side, which is the last part of our framework. The other side is literally like, I now know something that I need to share with other people. They need to know what's up here on top of this mountain. They might have to climb and get their knees bloody and lose the trail map and get a little off course, but they need to know this is available. This is up here. Mm. So you now have a message to share and you have an audience you want to share it with. So you go running down the other side of the mountain, sharing that message. So that's really the like, in the storytelling, that's like the point of the story. Why are you telling the story? The number one rule of storytelling is to know who your audience is. When you know who you're speaking to, you will find the right story to tell them that will give them a message that they need to hear that will serve them, right? So it's really, really simple. If you can look through your own collection of stories, at any given time, you're not telling a story in chronological order. You're not telling someone you were born in 1971 and you were raised in East Texas and you went to this school and you had this job and then that job. And then, you know, you had two kids and you got married and you got divorced and you got remarried. Like, do not tell a story like that. 
you're literally just going to focus on these three things because every step of the way, those are very emotional stories. Those are very connected stories that you can share with your audience because you know what it feels like to feel at the bottom of the mountain, right? You also know what it feels like when you got to the top. And so you're naturally going to explain that in the storytelling, and that's going to take your audience on a journey up and over your mountain with you. And by the time you get to the other side and you're telling them what you've told them, they want to drink the Kool-Aid with you. So in business, don't you think this is pretty beneficial to bring clients into your world, to add, to magnetize people to your brand? This is how you can literally use storytelling to literally market yourself and grow your business. Amen to that. And in just a moment, we'll give an assignment where we can implement this in our careers. But beforehand, I want a cl clarity point because the chronology, I know we've talked offline that some of the best stories aren't just chronological. In in this sense, you know, you're at the bottom of the mountain, the you climb it and there's things that occurred to allow you to climb it. Then you see the light, you transform, and then you share it with others on the way down. That feels chronological. Is that still the framework or is that? Do it I is chronological. You're right. Um, because, you know, you don't get to the top of the mountain without first being at the bottom of the mountain. Right. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, it is chronological. What I to So to make the clarification there, what I'm saying is most people tell the story from a chronological lens, not knowing where they're trying to take their audience. And so where they tell them everything. And yeah, where to they begin. don't know where to end it. And so all they're doing is just telling the details of the chronological order instead of only telling the important pieces of the chronological order, which was how did it feel when it sucked? How did it feel when it was awesome? How did you get from suck to awesome? And then what is the message? What is the lesson you learned from that lived experience that you want others to hear on that other side? And, you know, all of us have those types of stories. You know, when I, when I started out as a journalist, I thought I had a pie in the sky that I was going to go, I was working for CBS television. I was going to go be a journalist. I was going to go change the world. I was going to go tell amazing stories. And I was going to have a great career. And when I started working in television as a journalist, I realized the majority of the stories that I was being asked to share were around robberies and murders and the depravity of humanity, quite honestly. You know, we wanted to feature everybody on the 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock news when they were literally being their worst. And that really got to me after a while. That began to weigh heavy on me as I was a young journalist with a very idealistic view of the world in my 20s. Um, and I began to sink into a depression. And I began to have a lot of anxiety. And, you know, you haven't known me that long, Ben, but depression and anxiety aren't exactly, you know, in my DNA. And um, I really am a very positive person. I, I like to make people feel good. And suddenly I was being the deliverer of a lot of bad news. And I began to ask some serious questions of, do I really, is this really how I want to spend my career? Can I see myself doing this for the next 10 years? Would I, I didn't have children yet, but when I start to have children, will I be proud to show my children this is what I do for a living? A lot of people think it's really fancy and cool to be on TV, but let me tell you, it's an underworld. And I was really feeling like I belonged to the underbelly of that world at that time. And I, uh, I made a very bold and courageous move at the very early stages of my career to leave that business at a time when I was really on a trajectory going up very high. A lot of people thought I was crazy for leaving, but I knew that if I left, I had the opportunity to find a different way to go and tell people's stories, but to do it in a way that would feel good and would bring more light to this world instead of featuring them in their darkest moments. And that was a seed that was planted in me and my career took some twists and turns from there on out. But when I started Light Beamers, 
that was like the seed that had been planted back then finally bloomed. And I finally saw the exact way that I wanted to work with people and their stories and help them tell stories that, as I said, when you share your story, you do shine a light that truly does shine a light for other people. And so, you know, that's my own version of my up and over the mountain moment. But it's right. like, I now know that everyone has these types of stories inside of them. And I want to help you pull the best of your stories forward. I want you to find the stories that, you know, not to say you haven't been through some stuff. We've all been through pain and hardship and just, you know, mistakes or whatever it may be. But there is an other side to the story that you're not getting to. Right. And so we got to get you to the other side of that message so that you can clearly see that that story was a gift that was given to you and you need to go use it. And when you do use it, you're going to bring more people into your world. Mm. Our stories are gifts. Our stories are huge gifts. Yes. Yes. So we're going to give an assignment before we do. How do I learn more about Light Beamers, the podcast? There's so much that you're up to, coaching, speakeasies where should the listener go? The the hub of it all probably should be the website, I guess, you know, lightbeamers.com. Um, you will find out more uh, of the offerings that we have. We do have a podcast. We have a community. We have a speaker's program. And of course, we have our books. And so we'd love for you to read one of our books. We'd love for you to listen to a podcast or do a lot of teaching on storytelling there, as well as having amazing guests such as yourself on shows. Um, we have a community where we're prompting you weekly to tell a story so that you can get practice. And we have a speakers program to really, you know, it's more of a mastery level program where we really work with women leaders to get them out on stages and out in front of rooms, you know, conquering um, the arenas, if you will, and really using their voice to to share their story. Um, so yeah, lightbeamers.com is a hub for all of that. Love it. In the show notes, I'm a supporter. I love what you do. Give us an assignment because similar to the news broadcast about murder and death and dying and stealing and robbery, <laughs> this podcast isn't just to incite emotion. The purpose of this podcast is to learn something and then implement it. So give us something that we can implement, some easy win we can get to start telling better stories. Um, I think it'd be great to implement that that story formula that I just shared. I mean, sit down today or when you have a minute and write that down. What was the before? What was the transformation? What's your other side? And the before is just, again, where where were things once at friction in your life? The transformation is how did that friction start to ease and change for the better? And what did that look like? And on the other side, what do you think that that whole experience taught you? And what would you sh what would you say about that experience to someone else? What is the message you want to share with someone else about that story? And you do those three things, you got a nice little story you could go share with somebody. So you can, you know, one of the fun things I'd really love is if people want to be bold and brave, which I'm always calling people forward to to enact their courage is maybe share that story on social media and tag me. I'm at Lightbeamers pretty much on all the channels. My primary ones are LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And if you want to share that story publicly in any shape or form of it, um, tag me. And then, uh, you know, I will give you a gold star for being a great student and taking action. Love this. And if, if you want to do it in a business context, you mentioned it who's your audience and tell a story to them. And before you know, you might actually get clients just from sharing that story. So, Hey, I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. You know, we are, we're taught a lot about business. We can lead a presentation we can put together a pitch deck. We can, you know, put together, you know, a marketing promo, write an email and do some things like that. But leaders are not really often taught or encouraged to share their story. And I am here to disrupt that. I really think that that's a missing, a critical missing key for a lot of people that might be creating a disconnect between you and your audience and why maybe things aren't happening as fast as you want them to in your business. And the minute you start putting gasoline on the storytelling piece is when you're really going to see uh, a lot of change for, in the positive way for you. Like the ideal, most dreamiest clients will come forward. April. Thanks again. We ran long, but the listeners still here with us because you brought so much value. I appreciate your oh, story. I appreciate you. your time and we'll talk soon.
Thank you for having me, Ben.